الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Insha'Allah today I'll be talking about Surah Al-Falaq and Insha'Allah Surah Al-Nas Chapter of Falaq and Chapter of Al-Nas and insha'Allah, in this lecture, we will understand the importance of these two chapters and the meanings that they hold. Insha'Allah, we will start with chapter of Al-Falaq. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Say, I seek, say, O Muhammad, I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak. Al-Falaq is daybreak. And what is daybreak? Daybreak is the start when light starts coming this is the end of the night and the start of the morning. So Allah Azza wa Jal, in this chapter, the one who created everything, who created good and who created evil, subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaches you how to protect yourself. Daybreak is the first appearance of daylight in the morning. So Allah Azza wa Jal called himself Lord of the Daybreak, Rabbil Falaq. Why is that? You see, daybreak, we see it as something very simple. But it is a result of movements of the earth and the sun. So Rabb al-Falaq, Lord of the daybreak, he is the one who controls these huge planets. And they all uh, flow and go in a system, precision, with precision, by him, by his command, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shows you that he has control over everything and everything around you. Min sharri ma khalaq. So you're seeking refuge in Allah, Lord of the daybreak, from what? Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil of that which He created. This is general. This is this is the most general term here. All evil. Min sharri ma khalaq. They say here in Arabic, umum, general. Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil in general. From all evil in everything. So the reciter is seeking aid from the evil of all creation. So is there evil in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. Allah Azza wa Jal has created evil. But why? For great causes subhanahu wa ta'ala. This whole life is a trial. This whole life is a trial. Allah Azza wa Jal has created life and death to test whom amongst us will have the best of deeds. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عمله He who created life and death to test you whom amongst you will have the best of deeds So Allah Azza wa Jal has created evil for a great cause to test his servants to see whom amongst them will be the one with the best of deeds will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he wants and then Allah Azza wa Jal says after saying مِن شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ And from the evil of night as it settles. Why is that? Again, when night settles, many evil things happen. There are different creatures that come only at night. Insects, animals that usually hurt or harm humans in general. So we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these things that happen at night. What also happens at night is what's in the next chapter, what's in the next verse? What Allah Azza wa says, وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَادِ Okay, now this is something very important. And from the evil of the witchcrafts, when they blow in the knots. What's witchcraft? Witchcraft is when humans seek aid in jinn, the devils, in order for them to help them do evil things. Uh, we will be reciting now, we will talk about what, what are the causes or what co kinds of harm that's done with this witchcraft. But we have to understand that witchcraft, the one that we're talking about, we're not talking about those simple tricks that someone hides a card in his sleeve and he takes it out. We're not talking about this, we're talking about serious witchcraft, sorcery. So witchcraft is evil and it's a cause of harm for many, especially in these times and in the past. It's something well known. And I'm sure everyone here has someone he knows or knows of someone who is affected by witchcraft. SubhanAllah, this thing is very, very spread. And some people, they don't even know that they're affected. It's that crazy. So to understand more about witchcraft, let's recite the verses in Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah Azza wa Jal said, 
واتبعوا ما تتلو الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين بباب لهاروت وماروت and they followed after rejecting the book and following the book those people that were mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah and they followed instead what the devils had recited during the reign of Solomon it was not Solomon who disbelieved but the devils disbelieved teaching people magic and that which was revealed to the two angels at Babylon, Harut wa Marut. So it all started as a test. Allah Azza wa has sent two angels. Two angels to teach people witchcraft, but there's a condition, there's a catch. Before when someone comes and asks to learn magic, what the angels will say, وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ حَتَّى يَقُولَ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ فِتْنَةٍ but the two angels do not teach anyone unless they say, we are a trial. We are a trial. So do not disbelieve. What does that mean? If you learn magic, you will be a disbeliever. If you learn magic, I'm talking about witchcraft. If you learn this, you'll be a disbeliever. So, so they warned them. Again, it's a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people, they wanted this. They learned this witchcraft and, and as the verse will say, they will get absolutely nothing and they hear after and they know it. They know it. Okay, the harms. What do they learn? And yet they learn from them that by which they cause separation between a man and his wife. It works both ways. Some types of magic, they get two people together. And other types, they separate between, they separate, they separate the husband and the wife. And this happens a lot. SubhanAllah. But they do not harm anyone through it except by permission of Allah. It's not that they have complete control over everything and that, hey, we should fear these people. No. It's by the will of Allah. And Allah Azza wa left it to happen for a great cause. It could be a, a, a trial for that person who was struck by witchcraft and it will be a good deed for him if he's patient and he starts to fight back with Quran and going to people to recite Quran and him himself. It's very difficult, it's very hard. I know some people who were struck by witchcraft, when it started, it was extremely difficult to pray, to listen to Quran. They barely move. If someone recites Quran, they're in shock. But as time passes, they got over it and they became stronger and eventually, alhamdulillah, they got rid of it altogether. And mashallah, this is true jihad. And they will be rewarded for this. But it's important to understand the basics of these things. Okay, so they learn from them uh, what, what they separate the man from his wife. And the people learn what harms them. So what do they do? What do they learn? And the people learn what harms them and does not benefit them. But the children of Israel certainly knew, this is the catch here, they knew that whoever purchased the magic would not have in the hereafter any share. They will not get anything in the hereafter and they know it when they teach this and when they learn it. Even nowadays, when they go, you hear stories all the time for those who came back to Islam and repented. They said the first thing that the devil asked them is prove that you, they asked them for favors. What kind of favors? Favors that are, that will make you a disbeliever, end of the day. To disrespect the Quran, take the Quran, throw it in the garbage, or uh, humiliate words of the Quran, take them and put on them blood, or other things that I can't even mention here. So they want you in general to disbelieve to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they find, so let's go back to the knots. What, what's the deal with the knots? How do they blow in the knots? They blow in the knots, they said. What happens is they take papers, they write uh, words, letters, numbers, sometimes names of jinn, sometimes verses of the Quran upside down, and they get blood, sometimes uh, animal blood, sometimes uh, blood from uh, subhanAllah I don't want to mention these things but they do they disrespect the Quran in all types of ways okay and then they tie they tie things around it and when they tie they recite things they recite names of jinn names of devils and they blow it on the nuts and that's what it means when what it, the verse says 
في العقد they blow in these knots they blow in these knots and if you see so these things happen and they're very real subhanallah and they're spread amongst us but we don't know that's why we have to protect ourselves from these things don't take these things lightly and obviously those people who learn magic they disbelieve directly they might not tell you look we did this or we did that but but be careful of these things don't go to a magician okay and don't learn it for yourself and don't read these books that explain how to seek aid in devils so you go back to the verse and from the evil وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ Before that, I just, I, as I mentioned, witchcraft, if someone bargains witchcraft, takes in witchcraft, he leaves his religion directly and he knows that once he makes the contract, when he, once he makes the contract with the devil. So, and from the evil of the envier when he envies. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ SubhanAllah, another widespread disease amongst us. This is even more common. Hasad. The evil eye. Hasad. When a person envies another for something Allah has given him. How does this work? You see your neighbor. Okay, you're sick. You see your neighbor, mashallah, very healthy, very successful. He has a nice car. You don't. He's wealthy. You're not. So you start, the shaitan start telling you things, saying, well, why did Allah give him these things and he didn't give me? It starts. And then you start looking at him differently and your heart is burning with envy. This is, this is the objection. You're objecting on Allah end of the day. Who gave him these things? Allah. Okay, Allah didn't give you. Maybe it's for something you're doing. Maybe you should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, this is a trial. But what you don't do is you envy your brother. And when you envy, when these things happen, it's not words that you say. It's the I. It always starts with the eye. And hasad is something very serious. And it's a great sin, a major sin. As I said, it is because it is an objection on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah has given that person something and the envier hates him for receiving that gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's this hadith that the Prophet sallallahu has said, دَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ دَاءُ الْأُمَمْ دَاءُ الْأُمَمِ قَبْلَكُمْ الْحَسَدْ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ والبغضاء هي الحالقة أما إني لا أقول تحلق الشعر ولكن تحلق الدين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said the disease of the nations before you is creeping towards you, envy and hatred, and they're related. They are related. It is the حالقة, something that shaves. I do not speak of what cuts the hair, but it, but what severs the religion. It shaves your religions, your good deeds. Those person that have حسد, that envy their brothers. Their hearts are burning with envy and hatred, but end of the day, they're burning their own good deeds. SubhanAllah, it's a major sin, and you're burning your own good deeds. It's not worth it. Why not say, Barakallah, MashaAllah, I don't object on what Allah has given you, and I ask Allah to bless you with more. At the same time, you yourself ask Allah to bless you with these things. Who gave him? Allah. Then ask Allah. Instead of being envious and hating that person, Subhanallah. Okay, we'll continue now. Chapter of Nas. Surah An Nas. Because most of the things are related. Allah starts with this chapter with saying, Qul a'udhu bi Rabbin Nas. I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind. The one who controls mankind. He's the Lord of, every, of all mankind. Then he controls them. It's important. You'll see why. Malik An Nas. Again, the king of mankind. The ruler who owns, who owns us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ilah, God of mankind. So when you start this verse, when you recite this, okay, Rabb nas he is Rabb nas okay, he controls everyone. Again, he's also the king, the ruler who owns us. And the third thing, he is ilah nas So you're seeking refuge in him. You're, the first two verses reminds you that, again, he has control over everything. And then the, the third verse, ilah nas reminds you to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship that Lord, to be sincere to him. That Lord that you seek refuge in. So you seek refuge in him and you be sincere in worship. Because these two are related. When you seek refuge, you want help from Allah, but at the same time you have to purify your heart and be sincere to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ilahin nas. 
So this verse reminds you that the one you seek refuge in is the ilah that is worthy of worship. So be sincere to him. From what? We seek refuge in Rabbin Nas, Malik Nas, Ilah Nas. From what? Min sharrin waswas al khannas. From the evil of the whisperer, the devil, who whispers evil in the hearts of men. Who with al khannas, waswas, he whispers. Khannas, he disappears when the, from one's heart. When one, when, 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 does, when does that happen? Does anyone know? When does the shaitan disappear? Dhikr of Allah. When you do dhikr of Allah, when you say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Billah, he disappears. When he hears the adhan, he disappears and he farts. As the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Lahu durat. He disappears when he hears the adhan. So the shaitan, waswas, he whispers evil things to your heart. But then when, you, when the remembrance of Allah occurs, when the heart remembers Allah, he disappears and runs away. من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس who whispers in the breasts of mankind giving you bad thoughts beautifying the sins making them more attractive you're sitting there doing nothing okay at home relaxing suddenly you start having desires your heart start moving you want to make sins or you start having bad thoughts what happened that was okay five minutes ago that's the work of shaitan say a'udhu billah min shaitan rajim because you at these times you're heedless you forgot you're in a state that your heart has no remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you, well, how do you how do you protect yourself from that by doing dhikr always always protect yourself from the shaitan this heart is the house protect your house from the shaitan by doing remembrance by saying dhikr reciting Quran hey let's be real you're not going to be reciting Quran 24-7 but at least make dhikr, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. When you enter the house, you say bismillah. Before eating, you say bismillah. Protect yourself. Min sharr al-waswas al-khannas al-ladhi waswisu fi sudur al-nas min al-jinnati wal-nas. So not only are the devils from the jinn, but also from the humans, from the humankind. Min sharr al-waswas al-khannas min from among the jinn and mankind. So not only are they from the jinn, but they are also from mankind. Subhanallah. Wallah al brothers, we are blessed, blessed with this religion. Allah Azza wa who's cre who has created all of this, teaches us how to protect ourselves. And this was protection for the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who is the greatest of all creatures. Allah has taught him how to protect himself. And in the authentic hadith, it happened that the Prophet وسلم, he was struck with witchcraft by a Jewish sorcerer. And he'd imagined things. But then Jibreel came and told him this thing happened. And he taught him, and he showed them where uh, that witchcraft, that spell was buried. I think it was in a well. And after that, nothing has happened. He was protected. So Allah made this happen. He allowed this to happen so that we can learn, so that we can protect ourselves. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Allah has taught him these verses, these chapters. That is why it's very important for us to always try to apply these things. A day that you do not, do not recite, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ قُلْ عَدُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ عَدُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ is the day you are in danger. These things you are surrounded with. What? Evil in general. People of hasad. People of witchcraft. Many of us are surrounded with these things. We don't know who's the, who's the person who's going to envy us. Right? We don't know. Okay, what about the whisper of shaitan? This happens every day multiple times. Maybe now shaitan is whispering to some of you. Let, let me go. Let me leave this mosque. It's been too long here. This guy is talking too much. Maybe the shaitan is whispering to some of you now. So it's happening. That's why it is important to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all this evil. No one is safe. No one is safe except those that Allah protect. And how do we seek Allah's protection? By reciting these verses and reciting these chapters.